Good evening, fellow fans of Adventure Quest, or if you are a new viewer, hello there. Welcome back to the next installment of the Let's Play Adventure Quest series. And for today's episode, we will be going ahead and trying to get the best miscellaneous item inside of the game, and that is the Shadow Feeder Pendant. So regardless of what build you are, you definitely want to get this item. Why is that so? Because by clicking on it, you can get an extra turn, not just for yourself, but for your pets, your guests, and basically uh, every other thing uh, you get an extra turn so let's talk to a lot barriers here let's got any quests okay let's check it out Ultimon's Fortress okay so you wanna go to Ultimon's Fortress and then you wanna do part 3 okay so this is where you will find the uh, rewards okay so to battle let's go and I assume we will face lots of shadow monsters. Of course, the first one we get the black monster, which uh, its normal form is way, way, way more annoying <laughs> as compared to its shadow form. But it's okay. Shields. Um, we will use our. Ooh, where is our? Oh no! Oh dear! Oh dear! <laughs> I forgot to bring my darkness shield. Okay. This quest, you definitely want to use uh, darkness and light shield, so whatever, we are just going to restart the quest, please. Uh, ignore that none of that happened. Okay, so this quest, you want darkness and light, definitely. So, this is a rookie mistake, please don't make that mistake. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to act like that was on purpose, so that you guys, you know, there's a learning point for you guys. Always be prepared for the quest that you are embarking on. This quest, obviously, I'll be facing a lot of shadow monsters. So I will definitely need my light and my darkness shield. Anything else? Not really. Armors, uh, same. Uh, my darkness armor here and my light armor will be so neko. Right, so we should be ready to take on the quest now. I didn't really like to fight the shadow black anyway. Uh, it is one of the most annoying monsters, the regular version, because of its super low resist. But a shadow version isn't really that bad. So let us go back again. Man, all this talking uh, made me realize that I actually screwed up the beginning of the video. Okay, so I'm not going to restart this quest. I'm just going to, you know, carry on. And yeah, hopefully this quest isn't too long. It's about 10 battles, I think. Yeah, so we will go ahead, skip the cutscene to battle. Brilliant Shade, level 130. Okay, this one, I assume he hits with Dark. So let's switch to Twilight's Mantle. Twilight's Regalia, let's start. Alright, we will need energy. Pets, excellent. Because energy is one of our strongest elements there because of the burn that we can inflict with both the pet and our weapon, which is Thunderlord Spear. Alright, let's go. Don't need any miscellaneous item right now. There aren't any stat rolls in this quest, so we can just use our... Uh... SP whenever we see fit, but I want to build a bit of SP first before we start pulling out the gas and the uh, the gas and the miscellaneous item, right? Okay, so I've been doing quite a lot of research on what is good and what is not, and yeah, there are apparently a lot of miscellaneous items for me to choose from, so I'm. <laughs> Uh, I'm quite, I'm at quite a loss here about which miscellaneous item to choose, but I think Shadow Feeder Pendant is a definite must get, which is why we are doing this quest right now. Okay, Shadow Burp, this shouldn't be too hard as well. Light 46%, yeah, this is a pretty good armor uh, that resists a bit of light and a bit of dark, so it's not that bad. And we are burning him with the energy strikes, excellent. We resisted that one. Okay, 6.96. It's about 200 plus damage burn. 16.05. Uh, Ooh, okay, nice. Let's finish him. And we are done. Right, next one. Heal me. Oh, you get a full heal after every two battles. Excellent. Corrupted Exodus Beastmaster. Okay, this guy. Also a Beastmaster like us. But of course, we are the stronger one. We'll stick with energy because that's what we are strong in. Uh, I think I can start pulling out the gas right now. Don't think I'll need to pull out the uh, miscellaneous item yet. So we'll just save that.
Yep, okay, and looks like the shadow monsters in this quest, the elements seek between light and dark, but thankfully, Twilight's mantle, he has really good resistance against light as well, so, yeah, you don't really eat too much damage, so, this is a really good armor for you guys, uh, if you got, if you guys want to go on this uh, quest or those any of the quests with shadow monsters the battle shield here would obviously be exalted paladin guard i can't remember where you get that you guys can check the forms for that that one defends against both light and darkness simultaneously that will be the best shield if you're going up against shadow monsters but for individual light and dark there are better options out there right nice z tokens nice okay the shadow black again let's start I can't remember how many monsters you have to fight through. I think it's about 10 uh, small monsters that's 5 waves of 2 and then you have to fight the beast master you have to fight a shadow vortex I can't remember if you fight Ultimon here I think you only fight him in the last part can't remember but yeah there is a boss fight at the end of this so do stay tuned and let's see if we can beat the boss of course uh, that being said I do need to work on getting potions as well uh, for guard for guardians, it's really easy. All you have to do is go to your house, click, and you refill like 20 plus potions at one shot. But for adventurers, the fastest way is to do the uh, sh triple challenge inside our wallet's uh, meat shop. I think that's where you find it. And the triple challenge basically for every battle that you win, it rewards you with like one health and one mana potion. So that is the fastest way to get and stock up potions the limit for potions is 35 each i can't remember if that is the uh i know that is the limit for guardians i don't know if adventurers have a lower limit for potions i've never really tested that out but for guardian characters the maximum limit is 35 for each potion so uh, i don't know how far you can get as an adventurer but i will definitely stock out on those potions and we'll, they will definitely come in handy against some of the more annoying boss fights so Right here, 3.24, oh no, come on, please give me a higher burn, 4.54. Okay, we should kill him this turn. Yep, we do, nice. Alright, next battle, Corrupted Night Terror. Uh, yep, we'll just stick with energy right here. Let's just do Spear Master Emblem, because we don't really need to defend against his uh, damage. We just want to deal more damage and finish the fight faster. So with this being a defensive build and all, I'm starting to think that I don't want the Spear and the Bowmaster Emblems inside of my miscellaneous uh, inventory because they don't really have synergy as a defensive build. They're more for offense base since they're boosting weapon damage and as a Beastmaster Ranger, I'm already not doing a, a fully defensive Beastmaster Ranger. I'm already not doing a lot of damage with my uh, regular attacks to begin with so I don't see a real point of boosting that. Maybe I might just get something that uh, boosts the uh, pet damage instead. I know Arya's Rattle and then you have your uh, Guardian Colossus Shock Caller or something like that. Yeah, those are some uh, pet and gas uh, damage boosting items. I can't remember what else are there. I have to do a bit more research. But I think I'll lean towards getting those items as opposed to uh, sticking with Bow and Spear Master Emblem. So now we have Nif the Shadow Dragon. Okay. Ooh, okay, and he's going to hit us with a SP attack next. Not sure what that will be, but we will use Zade. I think he'll hit, hit us with light since light is our weaker element. Ooh, okay, he hits us with darkness. That's, that's great because uh, our darkness resistance is already super low. Guess he's going to be dealing almost no damage now. Yeah, 45. That is really, really pathetic damage that we can just ignore. That's great. Okay, so this monster not really diffi uh, too difficult, level 130 only, we are level 135. Mm, 7.54 burn, that's nice. I think we are reaching the end really soon. Oh, he hit with light just now, not sure why. Is it random? Yeah, I think it could be random. Ooh, okay, he's hitting with light now. Does he change to light after a certain HP threshold? I don't know, man. And he really needs to die now. Okay, he's not gonna die. Oh boy, that hurt. That really hurt. Please die. 
think it should die now, right? Yeah, it should most definitely die now. Okay, uh, do we get a full heal for this? Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Corrupted Exodus Beastmaster, right? Another one. This one, uh, same as just now, this should be pretty easy. Okay, nice. We got the energy burn already on the first turn. Uh, I did receive some comments uh, from you guys saying that you guys want to see more um, me doing more of the Mastercraft set quests as a non-guardian and a free-to-play player. How to get past all the Mastercraft set uh, quests. For, um, personally, I won't be doing everything. I will only be doing those that I actually need items from. And I've done some of them in the past already, including the dessert set, the... Twilight set and uh, whatever Mastercraft items you see in my inventory. I've done all those quests in the past before. You can look through my old videos. I'm sure you will see that I've done the Mastercraft sets uh, before for the items that I need. For the items that I don't need, I don't really see a purpose of doing the quests um, just because, you know, uh, uh, for the sake of doing it, if I'm not going to buy anything from the shop. That being said, I do believe that all of the quests are doable by uh, non guardians and completely free to play players you just need to have the proper equipment and you should be able to get past any quest uh, the main problem I always face is that I get lazy I don't uh, I'm not a huge fan of farming goals on to save go and try to be efficient you know not getting the best uh, level equipment for that quest and not getting the proper resist like if it's a dessert quest you'll be facing a lot of ice monsters if it's the Osiris quest you'll be facing a lot of earth and light monsters so you definitely want to make sure that you get the proper items and the proper resist the shield and the armor is very important weapon not that much but the shield and armor really will help to keep you alive so you don't want to scream on those items do as I say not as I do so don't scream on those items and you should be able to pass any mastercraft set quest just fine okay this one we will hit it with energy wow just nice okay uh energy or fire fire or wind okay yep we can use this that's fine let's do spear master man he will split in two after certain amount of damage is dealt to him because that's how hydras work at half hp i think i can't really remember yep he splits now and he gets the double hits in it's okay, this Shadow Hydra are very little HP, super easy to take down, not a big problem at all. Should die right now, right? Yup. Okay. Next up. Uh, this should be the last. Oh, you actually have a roll. Oh, okay. Yeah, pass it easily because it's a dexterity roll. Okay, this should be the last monster. I think Shadow Vortex. Oh, it's actually under level. Okay. Uh, we'll just stick with this. Shouldn't be too Wow, wow, wow. Okay, pulls me into the shadows. Wonder that what that means. I mean, he just drained all my mana, so that's fine. Oh, and looks like, yeah, we're only doing 50% damage to him. Sari has adapted to light. Excellent, that's what we want because our light is our weaker resist, so we'll need that more than we need the dark resist. Uh, yeah, okay, he's doing that. Okay, the burn is slowly starting to stack up and deal more damage to him, so that's great. 103, okay, nice. Should be down this turn. Does he get another turn? Yeah, I think he does. That's fine. The burn will kill him. And done. Shadow Vortex defeated. Wow, surprisingly easy quest. No problems whatsoever. Okay, this should be the end, right? Yep. Now, let's get the reward, finally. Okay, Shadow Feeder Pendant, level 125 version for non-guardians. Okay, so I'm going to sell one of the items here. Uh, I think I'll just sell Bowmaster Emblem, don't have a use for that. Let's get Shadow Feeder Pendant. And I am level 135, so this item is like 10 levels lower. Let's test it out. We'll test it out against a proper monster here. Samurai Warrior, level 105, okay whatever uh shields let's do learning to fly 
armor you want to do advanced soul necro weapons or darkness weapon here cataclysmic crossbow darkness pet will be twilight's harbinger let's start Ooh, okay forgot to equip shadow feeder let's see if it actually works okay Ooh. wow okay you do that that's fine Nice, okay, it worked. This is a level 105 monster. I want to fight a level 135 monster and see how we do with it. Okay. Nice, double hits. Because of the celerity. Okay, we will call off the gas. Save some SP for the pendant. Wait, is it a one time use? Oh, I can't use it if I don't have enough MP, is that it? Hmm. I know Shadow Feeder Pendant does cost MP to use, but... I don't know, so is it a one-time use for Beastmaster builds like myself with no mana? Ooh. I mean, a one-time use is still better than none. Uh, one extra turn on your character and the pet and the gas is a really big deal, so... Uh, even if it's a one-time use, I would say still keep it in your active inventory. Alright, let's try that again. Shadow Zard, we have two of them, another shadow monster. Don't feel like fighting shadow monsters. Let's flee this. Give me something higher level to fight with, come on. Yeah, give me something higher level to fight with, please. Level 135 stuff? Level 105. Uh no. Higher level please. I want to test that against a regular high level monster to see how we do. 130, okay, this is close enough. Uh, Franken Carrot, let's start battle. Alright, we'll wait until we have enough SP before we use that. Because I think that might be a one time use thing. Okay, uh, armors, you want to use energy, lot of thunder, shields, thunder lots, crest, let's attack. Haven't sought the pet out yet. Pet should go for light or wind, okay. Uh, let's do light then. I think this is enough. Let's test it out. Uh, can we just keep the pendant there? 44 SP. No, 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 not pendant. Sorry. Shadow feeder pendant. 56 MP to use. Okay. Uh, no, unfortunately, it didn't work. Drag. Does it drain MP each turn? Let's see here. Yeah, it looks like it does. So, it's a one-time use thing uh, for this build with no mana. So, you definitely want to make sure you have enough um, SP before you use uh, your Shadow Feeder Pendant because you can only keep it there for two turns and you basically have to keep clicking on it until you uh, it proc. So if it uses up your whole SP bar and you couldn't get it to proc, then unfortunately you wasted it. But it's still a really good item, I think, and uh, it can be used for basically any build. You just have to keep it there long enough for you to be able to click on it and activate the celerity once. Because for most of the battles, let's face it, you are mainly just activating the celerity once, at least for nuking builds. But for Beastmaster builds, once is still an extra turn of damage for yourself and one turn lesser uh, damage from your opponent so i'll definitely keep that in my active inventory it may only be level 125 which is 10 levels lower but i would see it still as a very useful item so that is it for this uh relatively short episode hope you guys have enjoyed if you have be sure to give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to my channel for more such future content till the next time i'm your host carbon gaming peace out